Alice really was the, the start, the beginning. First uh, full-length narrative work at the Royal Ballet in over 20 years. And of course, we um, have a tradition of narrative work. I grew up loving the works of Kenneth Macmillan and Sir Frederick Ashton. And so there was this long period without story. Very uh, successful non-narrative period where the focus became very much uh, the physicality of the body, uh, stretching, pushing the limits of the body. Uh, and that, of course, has carried on to present day, but I think audiences love stories. And I think stories are a great entry point for a new audience. We're always talking about having this discussion about new audiences. How do we get new audiences to come? The audience is dying. I don't believe the audience is dying, but it is a challenge, uh, especially after COVID and you know, the economy and getting people to, to want to invest in an evening at the Palais. So what I try to do now is create works, and maybe this is my, if you, if you want to say this is my, my niche, this is my, uh, my, my mission at this point, is to make accessible work that bridges the world of theater, musical theater, ballet, and uh, encourages uh, new audiences to come for the first time, and then perhaps they come and they see a full evening of abstract work, or, but, uh, this is my, this is really where I am currently as a choreographer. There are some British influences in the storytelling, in the, in the dance styles. Uh, I, I lean on kind of pantomime tradition a little bit. Uh, in England we have a, the, the pantomime every Christmas, which is a very broad, very camp um, a Christmas show that we grow up with as children, and I love still to this day. I love love to go and see a panto, uh, but I also le lean a little bit into vaudeville and sort of the American uh, variety show uh, structure as well. And of course, it was huge in America. Vaudeville was the beginning of of musical theater. So, um, so it's not not just British. I'd say there's there's quite a lot of uh, of American influence also in the, in that. Well, I think being in the front of a room uh, as a choreographer or as a director takes, these days especially, because complicated times and, um, and the way that we work with dancers is very, very different from the way choreographers worked with dancers when I was growing up. Um, and it's right that we've shifted, you know. So, so I suppose in a way it's um, through inspiring them um, uh, and of course leading firmly because you need the product to be very good, you need the pr performances to be excellent. But I think dancers respond very well to uh, personal connection and they want to work hard, they want to do well. It's very rare that you come across someone who really doesn't care. Um, and what's challenging for me is that I come in very last minute, especially on this one, it's only three days before the opening, so I have to get them all on board very, very quickly. But with Alice, it's sort of easy because I think they've been performing it for a while, and there's a lot of detail that they don't know, and it's no one's fault, it's just that it can only really come from me. So what I, what I try to do is, without overwhelming them, <laughs> give them a lot of inf information, inspire them. Today it's gonna to be very much about like, you know, we can do this under duress, whatever. Um, and I think, I think that's, that's the way that, that, I, that I get them on board. And also a little bit now from having worked with actors, help them to perhaps understand their roles a little bit differently from, a, from an acting perspective. Um, I, you know, I've gotten better at at drawing out performances from, from actors, so now I translate that a little bit into my work with dancers as well. In the whimsy of the piece, uh, you know, it, Alice has a, has a very l light touch, um, and, and I think that now knowing perhaps the evolution of some of my story ballets beyond Alice, you would go back now and say, oh, I see how, how, that's, how that's evolved, where he's come from. Um, and probably, actually, if you go back to the works leading up to Alice, you could see that too. Uh, I always find it quite hard to talk about di a distinct style. Um, people always say, well, oh, it's so Wielden, or it's so 
you know, I think it's clearer when something's Forsyth because the, because the way he shifted and changed the vocabulary. I don't change the vocabulary so much, but I guess maybe my signature is becoming, um, is becoming storytelling and character development. The process really was, it was kind of a riot, and everybody was very, very excited. I remember the, the Opera House as, as, a, as, a, as a little town, because you, you know what they're like, Opera Houses tend to be that way, and everything is built um, at uh, Covent Garden. You know, we have our workshops, we have the, the prop shops, the scenic workshops, the costume, everything is in the building. And I just remember, you know, you'd leave rehearsal and you'd see two prop guys like carrying a giant sponge cake down the hallway, like giggling like, like fools. And um, uh, all these little magical things sort of started appearing in the room. Uh, and yeah, we had, a, we had a, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun making the piece. Overall, the company were really ready. The younger generation of dancers were very ready to have their own story ballet. They, they, they grow up in the story ballet tradition. They're aspiring to dance Juliet and Romeo and Manon and all the rich characters that already exist in the repertoire. But they don't, as a company, have, or they didn't at that time, have works that, that were created on them. And so, and I think every generation of dancer are very proud of the works that they create. So for, for that moment in time, this was their new story work. Well, I think, you know, what I tried to achieve when I was creating Alice was um, sort of on a level a little bit with the, with the um, Disney Pixar animation movies that you can take your kids to see it and they love one level of it but as an adult you're also appreciating another level of it so i think i think actually the the the, the best um I, I suppose my biggest wish would be that you know that of course children leave enchanted but also um there's a little bit of childlike um, energy that's unlocked in their parents also so i suppose Rediscovering the inner child, maybe. <laughs> Alice as a ballet is, is, is fairly epic in scale, uses everyone in the company. Sometimes companies struggle even to have enough dancers. They bring people in from outside to kind of supplement in a way. There's so much detail in the production. There are many scenes. Um, and one of the things that I try to encourage in a company when they're doing Alice is a sense of community and a sense of doesn't matter who you are. You could be a student guy wheeling a conical hedge around the stage. I was trying to, I'm not sure if you were there yesterday, but I was trying to appeal to them and say, you are so key to the success of this scene. Every, every, every aspect of the production actually has to have full integrity in order for it to work. Um, and that, that is nice for a company. It, it's, uh, it's, ve it's very bonding because I think so often there's only focus put on the principal dancers. This ballet involves everyone, huge orchestra. It's one of the largest orchestrations of, I think, any ballet orchestra. Um, so, so sort of sonically, visually, and from the, the, the perspective of the company itself, it's a, it's a very um, inclusive and whole uh, piece of theater. There are a lot of uh, actually quite old-fashioned um, special effects in, in the show. They're all sort of based on Victorian magic tricks. And uh, we, we brought in a, um, a magician at the beginning of rehearsals to, to help us sort of devise some of these ideas. Some of them I had a very clear, clear idea of what I wanted. Like I really wanted Alice to jump into the, into the photography bag of Lewis Carroll to go down the rabbit hole. So that was fun to sort of devise an idea around that. Um, and actually in some productions, when we do it for a theater that doesn't have a trapdoor, because here you have a trapdoor, um, they, we have a, a jelly um, that grows on the table. So the jelly grows and Alice and the rabbit go down through the jelly into the table, which is also a lot of fun. Um, so different theaters pose different challenges, uh, but there are, 
there's a lot of a lot of old-fashioned theatrical techniques, which for me are always the most magical because you, you almost want to know how it's done in order to like fully appreciate it, especially now when you know you, we see so many special effects and things that are are so uh, CGI'd and so something fun when you when you see that it's actually made by humans. When I was creating uh, the concept for Alice, there are there are certain there are certain things that uh, traditionally in ballet kind of need to exist in a full length ballet. You know, you always have your sort of your grand pas de deux moment. You need to figure out ways for there to be. Um, to, to utilize the dancers, to, to really use the, 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 the breadth of technique that these brilliant dancers train years for. So I decided not to make Alice a little girl. And I sort of, um, she's kind of on the cusp of becoming a young woman. I always think of her as sort of around, you know, 13, 14 years old. And we invented a little kind of romantic encounter between her and um, and, and Jack, who is actually, you know, the, the gardener at, um, at the deanery at the beginning. And a lot of the characters in Wonderland, uh, like the book, were ba are based on people who visited the Dean of Oxford. The Dean of Oxford was Alice Liddell's, the, um, the, the original Alice, the, the, the little girl that the story was based on, her father. And of course, Lewis Carroll himself, um, being a photographer, finding ways to put Lewis Carroll into the story. So he becomes the White Rabbit. Jack becomes the Knave of Hearts who stole the tarts. Um, and, and in the first scene, Alice actually steals a tart and gives it to Jack, and he gets caught with it by the mother, who then becomes the Queen of Hearts. So, um, so Alice, in a way, is a little bit more mature than she is in the story, although in, in the book, she's, she's, she's pretty forward-thinking, and, and she's, she's, she's a plucky girl. She's smart. Uh, she doesn't stand for any nonsense. Um, she's both enchanted, but at the, same, at the same time, she kind of puts her foot down. Um, and so one of the challenges really then became making her not just an observer, but someone who participates. And of course, with her relationship with Jack, she actually really gets to participate. And also her relationship with the rabbit, who've, who I've always seen as this kind of slightly neurotic, very bad-tempered, but big-hearted character who, in the end, actually um, kind of saves the day. Um, and when it was created, I made it for a dancer called Edward Watson, Prince, big principal dancer of the Royal Ballet. And uh, Ed and I have been friends for years. And you know, I knew he would want to, he'd want the rabbit to have an edge for him to be just, you know, not, not, not fluffy and cuddly. Uh, so, so it was fun to build those characters and, and to just find a way for Alice to feel a little bit mature and for it to make sense that she would, you know, might have this sort of this uh, burgeoning romance with, uh, with Jack.